The New York Giants are one of the more interesting NFL franchises in the NFL today because after a relatively successful 2022 season where they made it all the way to the playoffs and won a playoff game, they would come crashing down to earth in 2023 by being one of, if not the worst team in the NFL. And as they enter into 2024, there really is not a clear sign as to how good this team will be. And personally speaking, I don't think they'll be that good. So today, let's talk about the New York Giants and why I personally have no faith in the New York Giants. So in order to do this video, we'll break it down into three different segments. We'll start off by talking about some positive things for this New York Giants team, things with their personnel, things with the overall hierarchy of that franchise. Then we'll talk about some of the negative stuff about the franchise, personnel, big picture things, all that sort of stuff. And then at the very end, I'll give you guys my predictions and synopsis for the 2024 season. Let's begin. So as I mentioned, we will begin with the positives of the New York Giants. And we're gonna start off with the personnel because I don't think the roster is particularly horrible. I think the bright spots for this team is going to be the improved receiving core, the defensive line. I like their linebackers a decent amount, and I do think their offensive line took a lot of steps forward. We'll start off with the offensive side of things. Looking into the receiving core, I do think Malik Neighbors is going to be a very good receiver number one. Obviously, time will tell with Malik Neighbors, and we'll just have to wait and see if he can become the guy that we think he can be. But based off what I saw in college and based off everything I know about him, I think he's going to be pretty damn good. His receiver number two, three, and four are also pretty interesting players players. You have Darius Slay, Wandell Robinson, and Jalen Hyatt. I've never been the biggest believer in Jalen Hyatt and his total skill set, but if you can find a way to use his athleticism and speed, then I definitely do think he could be a valuable player for this team. Darius Slay has sort of been the staple on this offense for quite some time. I think he's going to have another successful season, and Wandell Robinson, if he can stay healthy, is a very good slot receiver. I'm very intrigued to see what he can do this year. And as I mentioned earlier, I do think the offensive line took a couple steps forward this offseason, mainly within the left guard and right guard position. Last year, the guard combination for this New York Giants team was arguably the worst in the NFL, and it was honestly abysmal to watch, and I truly did feel bad for any starting quarterback for the Giants because of how bad those guards were. Andrew Thomas is, of course, your left tackle. He might be one of, if not the best left tackle in the NFL, so of course, you do have a superstar, at least in left tackle position. John Michael Schmitz is going to be a very good center for quite some time. I'm very happy that the Giants got him in last year's draft, and I do think he's going to continue to develop into becoming a cornerstone piece of this offensive line. Looking into Jermaine Illuminor at the left guard position, I wouldn't particularly say that he's anything special, but I do think that he gives you at least a veteran-like guy who's been there for quite some, or who's been in the NFL for quite some time, who can stand in there and not necessarily be a, a open door for pass rushers, somebody who can at least put in some work and at least help the offensive line somewhat. Then you brought in John Runyon to be your right guard, kind of similar to Jermaine Illuminor. I'm not expecting either one of these guys to necessarily be Pro Bowl or all pro level guys, but you just, you just need bodies who are capable of getting the job done and I think that both these guys are capable but then you have like the ultimate wild card in Evan Neal because in his first two years in the NFL it's been arguably the worst player of that draft he's been horrible and it was really bizarre because coming out of Alabama Evan Neal was thought to be somebody who could be a generational tackle prospect but it just has not quite yet worked out for the guy now I personally do believe that if he can't work out at the tackle position I actually think he could be a pretty solid guard prospect just because of how big and strong he is but unfortunately, the guy has like no athletic ability when it comes to playing that tackle position and he is a revolving door for pass rushers. So this is a make or break year for Evan Neal and I am very intrigued and I will be watching to see if he's able to step up to the plate and actually be a capable offensive tackle this year. Defensive line wise, I do think the defensive line is one of the better units in the NFL. Kayvon Thibodeau, Brian Burns, and Dexter Lawrence create a trio of excellent pass rushers as well as solid run stuffers as well. I think that defensive trio is i don't want to say overrated but i wouldn't say it's the best trio defensive line wise in the league like i think Kayvon thibodeau is a good player but i do think he's slightly overrated i don't think he's a top maybe 15 defensive lineman i could be wrong i'm not going to sit here and blatantly tell you guys that i can name 15 guys better than him but on the top of my head i think there's about 15 or 10 guys at least and then brian burns who's not a top five guy but maybe a top 10 guy i don't know i think they paid him a lot of money to go out there and get him especially when it wasn't really a dire need then, of course, Dexter Lawrence, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. That dude is a freaking stud. He's a top five defense tackle. And then you have Aziz Ojolari, who I'm interested to see what he could do alongside those guys. Linebacking core is nice with guys like Bobby Okereke, Micah McFadden, and Isaiah Simmons. I'm intrigued to see rotation Isaiah Simmons does end up with. Is he going to get a lot of playing time or is he just going to kind of be a rotational inside linebacker? I do think he took some steps forward last year, but I don't know necessarily if it's ever going to be enough for him to get a full time every down type of role on this defense, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Looking into the secondary, I do think there are some good pieces. I like the pick of Tyler Newbin to be in this year's draft. I think he's going to be an interesting safety prospect, somebody who I'm not expecting to play well out in space, but as a downfield and stuff for well tackler and decent coverage guy i'm not too mad at him playing that strong safety position you have deontay banks who's going to be your cornerback one for the foreseeable future a big fan of deontay banks i thought he had a really good year last year moving off of the person on this roster i think there's a couple of things that could potentially go and swing in the giants favor in order to make them a competent franchise which is going to be that brian dable who i personally do have a lot of belief in is going to continue to be a good coach for this team 2022 was kind of his breakout year where he was able to take this really poor Giants team to the playoffs and give them a really unique scheme and pass scheme that made this offense pretty electric. But last year, it kind of came crumbling down when the offensive line got worse. The team in general just looked horrible and defensively, it wasn't that impressive. But if you do believe in Brian Dable like I do, then I do think this team will be at least competent enough to be competitive throughout most of the season. And then when you look outside of the head coaching staff and look directly into the quarterback room, I think there's two possibilities that could be somewhat positive for the New York Giants. It's going to be that you have Drew Locke, who's a competent backup quarterback who maybe could come in and be your starter. I'll say maybe, but I don't know. And then, of course, looking at Daniel Jones, who I do think is a bit of a negative for this franchise, he is going to be somebody who you can get off of his contract pretty dang soon. That when they paid him that big sum of money, I thought it was a stupid idea then. It looks even stupider now, but you can get off that contract fairly easily. But okay, we talked about some of the positives. Let's now transition over to the negative side of things because there's a couple negatives. Again, we'll start off with the personnel and then we'll go a little bit deeper into some bigger picture things. Starting off with the personnel, as I mentioned, I'm just going to go strictly into Daniel Jones first because i am not a believer in daniel jones nor have i really ever been 2022 was his best year of his career but even then it wasn't like he was playing out of this world it just sort of felt like he was just throwing it to his first read or second read basically every single time throwing off a dump off pass or running the ball with the legs and while I do think he could easily do that on a really good roster that has a lot of really good talent, for example, if you put Daniel Jones, let's say, on the San Francisco 49ers, maybe he could be a competent quarterback, but I'm not going to sit here and play hypotheticals with you guys. But from what I saw last year with Daniel Jones, where the team was god-awful, and he particularly was even worse, I have no faith in Daniel Jones as a starting quarterback in this league. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you guys he's the worst starting quarterback in the league, but I will say that he's the worst starting quarterback in the NFC East, especially behind guys like Dak. Jalen Hurts and I personally do believe that Jaden Daniels is a better quarterback but I also kind of think that he's not even the best quarterback on this roster I actually kind of think that Drew Locke presents at least a better quarterback option than Daniel Jones I'm not going to sit here and say that Daniel Jones should get benched for Drew Locke week one I'm not going to sit here and say that just because I do believe that Daniel Jones does have some qualities to being a good quarterback in the Brian Dable system He's got really good athleticism. I think his pocket presence is somewhat underrated, and I do think he has a decent arm. It's just that he's very conservative with his arm talent. I do think that if Daniel Jones does not play up to expectations this year, I think they should instantly move off to Drew Locke and try to move off of Daniel Jones this offseason. In my opinion, the expectations for Daniel Jones is that he has to play up to that 2022 standard or else he's going to be gone. And honestly, even if he doesn't, even if he does meet that 2022 standard, I still have a feeling he'll probably be off the team either way moving off of daniel jones i have some question marks and a lot of different position groups on this team starting off with the running back position i'm not a big believer in devin singletary and eric gray and tyron tracy i will say i do think tyron tracy has some high upside but i don't know if it's going to be instantly as a pure starter i've just never really been the biggest believer in devin singletary i actually kind of think and i kind of hope that tyron tracy will eventually be the starting quarterback for this team so if you do play fantasy football and you want to build a competent running back core maybe you think about Tyron Tracy because I could definitely see a world where he does get the start over a guy like Devin Singletary. My only other really big question mark on this Giants roster is going to be the tight end room and the right tackle. Like Daniel Bellinger and Theo Johnson are okay but in my opinion I think you need a little bit better in that position. I don't think it's a dire need right now like I think this team has a lot of other holes they need to look to address but I think in the future maybe going out there and getting a more dynamic option in that tight end room could be a little bit more interesting and I talked about Evan Neal earlier. I'm just not quite yet sold on him as a right tackle maybe move him to guard maybe just cut him straight up we'll have to wait and see on that one 
Defensively, I think there's a lot of positives going for this team. As I mentioned earlier, I like the defensive line, I like the linebacking core, and I like Deontay Banks and Tyler Newbin. I don't really know what I feel about their cornerback two position going with Cordell Flott, Drew Phillips, or Aaron Robinson. I think one of those three guys will start next year, and I'll imagine it's going to be Cordell Flott. And while I'm not the biggest Cordell hater per se, I just don't really think that he's going to be all that fantastic. Last year, he had about a 54 overall grade on PFF, and just looking through the eye test, never really thought that he was a particularly special cornerback. Now, I will say he's going to get a really good opportunity to get a lot of playing time and experience this upcoming season. So we'll have to wait and see if he can potentially reach that expectations alongside Deontay Banks, because I think this secondary has to be pretty good if this team wants to be successful next year. And I just don't believe too hard in Cordell Flott. And then of course, behind him, you have guys like Drew Phillips and Aaron Robinson and a couple other guys, a couple younger guys and a couple older guys, but I still just don't really know who's going to be that true cornerback too for this team. And especially Especially when you have a younger guy like Deontay Banks, ideally you want to find an experienced number two option, such as maybe like a Tredavious White, who can help Deontay Banks develop while also giving you competent quarterback cornerback play in that cornerback two position. But they have who they have, and I don't think it's that big of an issue. But I think long term, you might want to look at addressing that position next year or within the next couple years. Moving off of the personnel for this segment, let's go ahead and talk about some bigger picture things, starting off with the improvements in the NFC in general. I think the NFC has sort of transitioned into becoming a better conference over time like if you look at the nfc north that might be the best division in the nfl if you look directly in the nfc east you have two quote-unquote contenders i don't think dallas is a contender but i think they have the talent to win it all but will they probably not but you also have Philadelphia, who's a fantastic team. I think Washington will be a better team next year. So you have to take into account that the whole division is going to be really hard to beat, and especially because Dallas doesn't typically lose to the New York Giants. So you could probably just take off two losses right there. So right then and there, I don't really think the Giants are going to be all that competitive within the NFC East this year. And then you could look at like a NFC West, for example, and you can say, well, Arizona is getting better. The LA Rams are really awesome. You have the Seattle Seahawks who are a good team. And of course, San Francisco is an awesome team too. NFC South, a little bit slacking, but you know, the Falcons are a good team. The Saints are a competent roster. I think the Panthers are getting better as well. So this division and this conference in general is all getting better. And it just feels like right now the Giants don't really have a general direction. Like, are they trying to compete for a title or are they trying to compete for the first overall pick? It kind of feels like they're in the middle of that, of just trying to be okay. And in my opinion, that makes you a little bit directionless as a franchise, which is another big negative in my opinion, because in my personal opinion, if you're an NFL franchise, you should have a direction, whether it's to go out there and try to win or if it's to go out there and try to lose. I think you kind of have to pick one or the other. And I just don't think right now the New York Giants have really figured out where they want to go as a franchise. Now, I will say this moving off of Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney made some sense. I just really don't understand the Xavier McKinney part because he's young and also really good. But I think it does tell you guys that they're not really going to go out there and commit a ton of money to free agents even though they paid brian burns a crap ton you get my point i think this franchise is sort of at a point where they're like let's go ahead and kind of slowly commit to players who we think are cornerstones but we'll figure out other positions as time comes i think this year is going to be a big make or break year for a lot of different players like evan neal and daniel jones and so on and so forth and if those guys can't prove to be cornerstone pieces of this franchise they're going to replace those guys in hell if brian dable can't prove to be the good head coach we think he can be they might move off of him as well but okay we talked about some of the good we talked about some of the bad what is my personal opinions and predictions for the 2024 new york giants now i want to quickly say this is not a final prediction this is just kind of off the top of my head and later in the offseason i'll do a more formal prediction for every single nfl team including the new york giants but i'll be honest with you guys I don't think the Giants are going to be all that good next year. I think they're probably going to win somewhere between five to seven games next year. I think they'll miss the playoffs. I could be wrong, but I just don't think the roster as it's currently constructed and you compare this roster to the rest of the NFC, I think this roster necessarily stands as highly as those other guys. Like I can generally see a world where this team goes 0-6 within the NFC East because how highly I think of the Cowboys, the Eagles, and the Commanders. And if that right there takes up six losses already, you got to look at the rest of the schedule and kind of nitpick which teams they could potentially beat. And I don't really think they're beating a whole lot of teams because I don't believe in Daniel Jones and I don't believe in this roster quite as much as I do as a bunch of other teams. So again, five to seven wins. I hope I'm wrong though, but you guys let me know in the comment section below. What is your personal opinion on the New York Giants? And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button, but I love you guys. Peace.